United States, the past America's summits have rarely been meetings to embrace, but that may be about to change. The recent thaw in relations between the United States and Cuba could alter the regional dynamics. We continue our team coverage with Nathan King in our newsroom about what the U.S. hopes to achieve. And Nathan, the issue of Cuba, of course, will dominate, but will it also open doors for the United States in the hemisphere? Yeah, Mike, I think you're right, and Michael's right as well. The images of President Barack Obama and Raul Castro making appearance together will get all the attentions, but nations will also be looking for a change in U.S. attitude. Two years ago, the U.S. announced a new chapter in relations with the Americas, the era of the so-called Monroe Doctrine, the policy with which the U.S. reserved the right to insert itself into the affairs of the Americas was declared over. Now the message is one of partnership, but decades of distrust uh, with Washington will be hard to erase overnight. As U.S. President Barack Obama arrives in the region, there's a sense of history in the air. I think the Cuban people are extraordinary and have huge potential. And uh, what's encouraging is, is that the overwhelming majority of Cubans are interested in ending the Cold War, the last vestige of the Cold War, and moving forward. The Summit of the Americas, for the first time, brings all 35 members of the Organization of the American States together. The thaw in relations between the U.S. and Cuba will dominate the summit, and there are high hopes that Presidents Obama and Castro will do more than shake hands and exchange a few words, as they did at the funeral of Nelson Mandela. It had been hoped that the U.S. and Cuba would have re-established full diplomatic relations by now in time for this summit. Havana had also wanted to be removed from the U.S. list of states that sponsor terrorism, too. That may still happen during the meeting, but the fact that Havana and Washington are talking at all means the U.S. can start to move beyond the Cuba issue, which has long been a distraction in its dealings with the region, and instead focus on policy priorities. Non-ideological uh, focuses on education, on getting energy to people, uh, getting energy costs lowered, um, focusing on democracy and human rights. But the U.S. treatment of another regional player and Cuba's main ally, Venezuela, could overshadow the summit. Last month, the U.S. announced the political and economic situation in Venezuela warranted designating Caracas an extraordinary threat to U.S. national security and foreign policy interests, and sanctions were imposed. Much of the region, including Cuba, relies on subsidized Venezuelan oil, and Washington's words were not well received. The theme for this seventh summit of the Americas is prosperity with equity. The U.S. will be pushing member nations to sign on to the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. But for some countries here, Chinese investment is the driving force. Over the next decade, Beijing has pledged to invest $250 billion in Latin America and the Caribbean. And it's also investing in Venezuela's oil-based economy. $20 billion in projects was announced in January. So for the U.S., this summit is all about getting relations with the hemisphere back on track. And with the Cuba relationship seemingly on the mend, Havana no longer needs to be a wedge issue that separates Washington from the continent. This summit, though, needs to be a success for Washington, as there are other growing regional groupings that are gaining clout that exclude the U.S. and that are engaging with the world, Mike, on their own terms.